Up next, HomeKit compatibility for, wait for it, the Ring Video Doorbell Pro. Welcome and thanks for watching. So early 2018, in a previous video, I installed the Ring Pro Video Doorbell in anticipation of a HomeKit update after having purchased this a year before. Uh, guess what? It's 2019, uh, more than a year and a half later and still no HomeKit. This is like three plus years after they made the initial announcement on a blog post on their website that HomeKit was coming. And they made that blog post at I think around June 16th, 2016. Um, I specifically purchased this Ring Video Doorbell Pro for HomeKit and uh, Ring still has failed to keep the promise it made to its customers all those years ago. Uh, well, today we're going to take it upon ourselves to try and fix that, at least partially, uh, through Homebridge. So for the uninitiated like I was myself, what is Homebridge? Uh, quite simply, if you go to the homebridge.io website, Homebridge is HomeKit support for the impatient. And I think most of us who picked up a Ring Pro years ago in anticipation of HomeKit compatibility have been, in my not so humble opinion, quite patient. <laughs> so the key components to getting Ring devices working under HomeKit um, are Homebridge and a Ring plugin by a talented developer named Dusty Grafe. And I hope I'm saying his name correctly because uh, he's done a great service for us Ring users. And uh, what this plugin does is it enables Ring devices to be exposed under HomeKit and the Home app. Previously, there were HomeKit plugins for exposing um, the Ring motion sensor under HomeKit, but uh, this is the first that actually exposes the live video feed. And until very recently, as in the last couple of days, audio. Um, now, as of this video, audio is only one way, meaning you will be able to listen to the person on the other side of the door, but you won't be able to talk to them, at least not yet. Um, I'm sure it's being worked on and hopefully it will be released in an update at some point. Um, in any case, I've been using the plugin um, for my Ring doorbell for a bit and it works great. Uh, kudos to developer Dusty for getting this working and many, many thanks to him as his efforts are greatly appreciated. Um, he's done what Ring couldn't or refuses to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, first I'll need to apologize for what this video is not and it is not gonna be a step-by-step -step introduction to Homebridge and how to set it up with a Raspberry Pi like I've done for myself. Um, there are already a wealth of tutorials and videos on this subject and quite honestly, um, I am not the best person to try and explain this process to folks just getting started with Homebridge. Um, I'm still trying to figure it all for myself. Uh, but what I will say is if I can get this up and running, so can you. I know we hear that a lot, um, but believe me when I say that, I am not a coder, nor am I a programmer. I don't fully understand JSON, the JavaScript object notation programming language uh, used to write the configuration or config file that is crucial to getting Homebridge and various public plugins working um, properly. Uh, I'm just an end user like many of you and my daily software skill sets are using Adobe Creative Cloud, Final Cut Pro 10 sometimes, um, and just general computing software uh, like games and general time wasters like browsing the internet. Um, so again, if I can get this working, so can you. Kind of sounds like an infomercial, um, but you can do this. <laughs> what I will try to accomplish in this video is create an awareness that there is a solution for Ring users um, like myself, like us, who want the promised HomeKit support for our devices and grew tired of waiting. I'll go through an overview of the steps I took to get this up and running and demonstrate how all this works under the Home app and HomeKit. So, Let's go ahead and get started. What we need to get started, um, I chose a Raspberry Pi because it's a small, lightweight computer. You can run it on a Mac, um, but that Mac is gonna be, or whatever computer you use is gonna need to run 24 hours a day. Um, and I can leave it, leave the Raspberry Pi running on my network headless. Uh, mine happens to be a Raspberry Pi 3 B+, and I think I picked it up for around $30, $35 at my local micro center. Um, with the recently released Raspberry Pi 4, you can probably pick up the one that I have for even less. Um, you'll also need a micro SD card. Mine happens to be 32 gigabyte and also a power supply and a case. Uh, 
you'll need to use a spare USB keyboard, mouse, and a monitor um, for setup and to enable SSH. Once you have SSH enabled, you can uh, terminal into the Raspberry Pi via OS X um, for more setup and um, installation of plugins. And I'll put everything in the description below, all the pertinent links that you might need. So once we have Homebridge up and running on our Raspberry Pi, let's take a look at the plugin that will enable us to add our ring devices to HomeKit. So here we are on my Mac and on the left, I have the homepage up for Homebridge, homebridge.io. And on the right, I have my terminal so that I'll be able to SSH into um, my Raspberry Pi and show you how I kind of installed plugins and other things um, via SSH on terminal. Uh, so let's go back on the left and let's view this homepage. It says HomeKit support for the impatient. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on GitHub and this will bring us to the GitHub page that has everything you need to install Homebridge on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, very quickly, um, one thing I will say, which is very crucial, to any install of Homebridge is the config.json file. Uh, this is crucial. You need to make sure syntax is correct. Um, and there are validators as a matter of fact. Let's go ahead and uh, copy this code. Oops, I didn't get all of it. Let's copy the, con the sample config.json file they have. We'll copy the code. Uh, and if we go into this JSON checker, and I'll go ahead and post a link in the description for the, this um, syntax validator. Uh, if we enter the code we just copied, um, it'll show that it's valid. And again, syntax is very important. Um, you know, if you miss a stray comma, it'll come up as invalid. Um, so just make sure you have all this uh, correct. Again, this is very important to kind of nail this down. Um, so there are a bunch of websites that check your JSON uh, code and this is one of them. So if we go back up to Homebridge, so that's that's the config JSON, that's the sample file they give you. And if we look at this, um, it shows accessories, uh, looks like they have a Wemo, probably a smart plug and a coffee, and they named it coffee maker because they probably have a coffee maker attached to it. And platform they have uh, a huge uh, system that they wanted to get into Homebridge. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the plugin for the ring um, under Homebridge. And this is the page again, it's from uh, Dusty Grafe. Uh, he's the one who developed this plugin and it works pretty well. And let me go ahead and SSH into my Raspberry Pi um, via terminal and all I have to do is click SSH, which is the command. Um, I want to SSH it to my Pi at the address, which is 192.168.1.48 and hit enter. And then it'll prompt me for a password and I'm gonna type in my password. And when you're typing in your password, you won't see it show up in the, in the terminal window. But once you hit return, you'll know you successfully SSH into your Pi and, and can access it because the, the prompt Pi at Raspberry Pi prompt comes up. And when you run each of these, so say I was to, to copy and paste the installation of the plugin in and hit return, um, it would go through what it needs to go through and I would know it was successful when this prompt would come up again and waiting for the next command. So again, I would quite literally, again, just copy and paste all these over. And then they give you the the basic config for your config.json file um, that you would plug into into uh, your config.json file on your on your Pi. Um, let's go ahead and copy this code. I'm gonna copy that and let's plug it into the JSON checker. So it's under platform. Let's put it underneath this hue. Um, entry and let me paste it. So now I screwed everything up and it's showing me it's wrong. So if we look and I actually like to kind of have mine separated just so I know where things start and end. Um, I know that this needs to be, uh, you know, everyone 
formats them different. I know this platform is already up here, so it doesn't need that. So if I delete that whole line, um, then again, I just like to keep things, um, add some kind of uh, organization, just so I know uh, exactly where everything is. I mean, right off the bat, I mean, it tells me, you know, what it's expecting and what it got. Um, I just know from my own experience uh, that this bracket shouldn't be there and as well as this curly bracket shouldn't be there. And once I add that comma, there it is, it's valid JSON. And if, I, if I'm absolutely wrong, I'm sure someone will tell me I'm wrong in the comments. Um, sometimes you can get a valid JSON file and it's still not work. You kind of have to go through it and try to figure out where you messed up. But this, as far as I can see, with my limited knowledge, um, this looks correct. And I believe this would run correctly. So let's go ahead and go back here to the web page for the plugin. And one thing to keep in mind as well is if we scroll down, um, this will talk about the camera feed and it shows a snapshot from the camera while viewing the room in the home app. Um, it shows a live feed and again, it supports video out of the box and will supply audio again one way audio as well if you have ffmpeg um, installed and when i first installed this i didn't have it installed and i was wondering where's the audio then i went back and read this and i found out oh wait i have to install this separate part to get the audio and again there's a page here and this is the instruction on how to install ffmpeg so you can get the audio working under the Homebridge Ring plugin under Homebridge. Um, and again, I, I'll say it quite literally, I took each one of these, copy and pasted it, and hit enter and let them run and do their thing. And they did everything. Um, you know, I would wait for it to finish and I knew it was finished because I would have this singular prompt come up right after. Uh, and I would go through this one, this one, you know, make sure you copy the whole thing. Uh, CD that just brings it to another directory um, then you run all these and I will say every time you run into the make command the make commands are gonna take a while so you know go grab a cup of coffee go you know find something to waste time on you know bring up that game on your iPhone and you know you're gonna wait a while the make commands take a while so you're gonna wait a while and I'm not gonna run these because I don't want to mess up my install I don't know if it would but I don't want to attempt fate because <laughs> everything's working fine now um, and once you get everything installed and running then hopefully you will have uh, your ring video doorbell um, in HomeKit. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like under the home app. Uh, we'll scroll down to where the cameras are and there are my cameras loading. Uh, this is iOS 13 beta so it might look different for you. Uh, okay, all the cameras are loading. Um, so you can see I named my ring front door. So let's go ahead and click that and check out the live feed. It loads and after a few seconds, it's live video now as you can see. And it took a few seconds, but the sound or the audio loaded as well. Again, this is one way audio so I can listen to what's happening outside but I can't speak to whoever may be at the other side of that doorbell. So what's cool about this is, so I have my front door lock in my Schlage Sense, um, as you can see in the living room. Um, I'm all, I've also placed my ring doorbell in the living room as well. So what that does is, in iOS 13, if you look at the bottom right, there is a, um, uh, it looks like a folder with some devices in there. If you click that, um, it shows you all the devices in the living room that I currently have. Uh, you can see a, a living room window sensor and the window's closed. Um, there are motion sensors and um, a Ecobee sensor for temperature and the living room front door. So what's cool about that is Say someone rings a doorbell, 
Um, you see them there, uh, you know who they are. You can click the bottom and click the living room front door and unlock it from here. And that will unlock your front door. And that's pretty cool. Then, um, then you can monitor them through the ring doorbell if you like. Let's go ahead and close that living room front door. So the integration is there. Uh, the one thing though, uh, there is no intercom. Um, again, because it's only one way audio for now, but hopefully two way audio will be integrated soon. And then this will be a fully functioning home kit video doorbell. So one thing I wanna say, and this will be an unpopular opinion amongst uh, Homebridge aficionados is avoid the solution altogether if you can. Uh, Homebridge was a great way to bring older devices into the HomeKit ecosystem before there were native devices on the market. Uh, these days, most smart home devices are either HomeKit compatible out of the box or have HomeKit incoming. So there are solutions for whatever uh, smart home devices you want. Uh, if you don't presently need Homebridge, I would steer clear. Uh, for this video specifically, if you don't yet already have a Ring video doorbell and you want one that is HomeKit compatible, uh, I say wait for the Netatmo Smart Video Doorbell or something similar to come to market. Uh, in fact, I've already signed up to the Netatmo website to be notified when their doorbell, doorbell is available because um, I still fully intend to rip this ring off my wall and replace it with a proper HomeKit doorbell. Also, there are a bunch of other reasons to stay away from Ring. Uh, obviously, the first is their failure to update their uh, promised devices with HomeKit compatibility. And they made us wait for years and pulled us along. Uh, secondly, and this one is huge for me personally, is privacy. Uh, Ring is allowing uh, law enforcement access to your video recordings sans subpoena. Uh, the police should ask you permission first, but if you deny the request, they can do an end around and ask footage directly from Amazon. Uh, if it has been uploaded to the cloud um, and is within 60 days of recording. So in effect, law enforcement won't need a subpoena from the courts to access your video recordings. Some will make the argument that, hey, if you're not doing anything illegal, you have nothing to worry about. Well, Ring doesn't only supply outdoor cameras, but indoor cameras as well. I don't really care for the thought of some stranger law enforcement or otherwise possibly having access to footage of my private moments in and around my home. Uh, feels less like home and more like a set to an exploitive reality TV show based on a George Orwell novel. <laughs> anyway, there are a couple of reasons to steer clear from Ring. I think everyone should consider um, any of these reasons before fully diving into their ecosystem. Uh, unfortunately, this is what the company Ring has evolved into after being acquired by Amazon um, and not personally what I bought into a couple years ago when I purchased the doorbell. With that, I'll end my rant on Ring and <laughs> end this video. Um, I wish you luck in finally getting your Ring doorbell into HomeKit. Again, I will list all of the pertinent links in the description below. If you happen to have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, ask them in the comments and I'll try to answer them if I can or at least try and point you in the right direction. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already or are new to the channel, please subscribe and tap the notification bell um, to get notified when I upload new content. And as always, until next time, please be safe and take care out there.